I come to you today to speak to the entire NASA family and congratulate you all on another banner year for the agency. This year, your work made headlines around the world, but more importantly, it enlarged our understanding of the universe and our home planet, inspired people, and opened new frontiers for our dreams and aspirations. I know it's been a tough year in many ways. All of us lived with uncertainty about our agency's future direction, and we all felt some sadness along with the exhilaration as each successful shuttle launch brought us one step closer to the end of one of our flagship programs. In spite of the obstacles and uncertainties we faced, it's a marvel to me how much we were able to accomplish. This is a testament to your dedication and professionalism. We live in a time of change and challenge. As President Kennedy said about his charge to reach the moon, we do these things not because they're easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. His direction still holds. We do the hard things because no one else can. We do it to advance human knowledge and improve the human condition. To take the easy path will not bring us to the future we want. Now, with President Obama's leadership and bipartisan support in Congress for NASA's Authorization Act, 2011 promises to be a much brighter year as we make steady progress to implement our new path forward. Over the course of the past 18 months, we've put together a good management team to lead us through this transition, adding Bobby Braun as the agency's chief technologist, Walid Abdullahi as the agency's chief scientist, and Leland Melvin as head of our education office. As a management team, we've had a couple of opportunities to engage in strategic planning and thinking sessions, including one we just completed earlier this week. And we're all on the same page and eager to move forward. We made history this month as our partner in commercial orbital transportation system program, SpaceX, became the first commercial company to successfully launch a rocket and retrieve a capsule after intact reentry. We're on the cusp of opening an entirely new segment of the economy that will thrive on innovation and help create good jobs. The COTS team and the other companies working on their own milestones are helping us not only rethink how we do business, but actually making it happen in real time. I know we're keeping the textbook publishers busy because it seems like new editions of the standard text need to be written every time our scientists make a revolutionary finding. And in 2010, there were quite a few. This year, our scientists transformed our understanding of the moon. Detailed evaluation of the lunar, crater, observation, and sensing satellite data, along with help from the orbiting lunar reconnaissance orbiter, showed us that our neighbor harbors many compounds, chief among them water ice, and it has a hydration cycle. And while scientists gave us that new moon this year, they also gave us new eyes on the sun with the Solar Dynamics Observatory. They pierced the veil of our solar system and discovered new things about planets orbiting other stars. With the Fermi Observatory, they showed us a previously unseen structure centered in the Milky Way that may very well be the remnant of an eruption from a supersized black hole. Epoxy gave us stunning images of a comet, the best we've ever seen, and all from a spacecraft that had already fulfilled its primary mission. That's just a tiny sampling of the wonders coming out of NASA science. Here on Earth, we achieved our goal of turning our data into useful tools and making exploration technology work for everyone. When 33 miners were trapped in Chile, their government called on NASA experts to help with the nutritional and behavioral issues the miners would encounter before their successful rescue, and also to assist with the rescue vehicle design. Similarly, we helped the world visualize the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico by repurposing some of our Earth-observing satellites and finding new applications for some of the prototype hardware that was flying in airplanes. Our data helped illuminate and illustrate the spill's location, 
oil concentrations, and impacts on Gulf ecosystems. When disaster struck in Haiti, we were able to help there too and enable the world to see the extent of the disaster. We also kicked off a new node of the severe system in Nepal, another example of how Earth and space observations can be combined to help decision makers make good choices and respond to disaster. Among the big news for NASA in the President's new direction was extending the life of the International Space Station to at least 2020, which will allow us to more effectively plan for its use and support a wide variety of research and engineering demonstrations. This decision came on the heels of our milestone celebrating 10 years of continuous human habitation aboard the orbiting laboratory. This year, we conducted more than 130 experiments aboard the station in biotechnology, human research, physical sciences and technology demonstrations, supporting the work of more than 400 researchers worldwide. In the coming years, we can expect advances resulting from the study of materials and structures in microgravity, such as increased understanding of bacterial virulence and how liquid flows through materials. This focused approach will maximize the station's value to science in the coming years and its use by many more entities, and we'll reap the benefits of this unprecedented model for international cooperation. This year, our shuttle astronauts and expedition crews aboard the station performed amazing feats inside and outside the complex. And the technicians, engineers, launch and flight directors, and thousands of others who made each shuttle flight safe and enabled the crews to achieve their mission goals earned our deepest admiration and gratitude. Our diligent focus on aeronautics research continues to pave the way toward the air transportation system of the future, next gen. This year, we concluded an 18-month research effort working with industry to visualize the passenger airplanes of the future. We continued efforts on many fronts to develop new airframe and propulsion technologies for significantly quieter, cleaner, and more fuel-efficient aircraft with better passenger comfort. We'll all benefit from Aero's hard work. I know that everything we do here is a team effort and that we weave in thousands of volunteers and citizens in all walks of life to carry out our mandate to innovate, inspire, and achieve big things. Whether that's the teachers who help make our first summer of innovation a success on which we can build and expand next year, or the hundreds of you who fan out across the country to schools and community organizations through our Speakers Bureau, or mentoring in our support of the FIRST Robotics Program, you are all important. You are all making a worthwhile contribution not only to NASA, but also to our national life and the health of our country. So thank you again. Your work is excellent. Your skills are noticed and your accomplishments are appreciated. As we celebrate this holiday season, observed around the world by many religions and faiths, but celebrated in some way by all, I wish all of you traveling safe travels. If you're gathering with families, enjoy the warmth, the friendship, and the love of this wonderful season. Remember the members of our armed forces serving around the world, particularly those serving in harm's way at this time. They sacrifice that we may continue to live in relative comfort and enjoy the way of life characteristic of this great nation of ours. Season's greetings to you all. May you all enjoy a prosperous new year. Working with you, I'm really looking forward to reaching even greater heights in the year ahead.